It's going to be a short, sorry, moving this around, short little video on uh, BCA tables on limiting reactants. So a limiting reactant, again, is a thing in a reaction, a reactant in a reaction that is running out. You know, like you, you light a candle, put it in a jar, it's going to run out of oxygen. That's the limiting reactant thing. The oxygen is a limiting reactant. You have excess candle. So the thing's going to run out. So a little analogy here. If we say we're making hamburger, if it takes two buns, one piece of meat, one piece of lettuce to make one hamburger. And they give you 16 buns, 16 pieces of meat, and 20 pieces of lettuce. Well, how many hamburgers can we make? Well, we look at this. We need double the number of buns as we do meat and lettuce. We don't have double the number of buns. So buns would be our limiting reactant. We can't make any more hamburgers than we have buns. We're going to have some excess meat and some excess lettuce. Those are called excess reactants. The hamburger is the thing being made that can never be the limiting reactant. It's not a reactant. It's being produced. So in this case, this is what we have before. We have zero of that. So we're going to say a BCA table stands for before. C stands for change. A stands for after. BCA. So our change here would be that we're going to use 16 buns. We're going to use all of them. We're going to have zero buns left over. Well. If we use 16 buns, we need half as many pieces of meat. We're only going to use eight pieces of meat because each burger only takes one piece of meat. We're making eight burgers. So we're still going to have eight pieces of meat left over. Those are called excess, not used. It's a one-to-one -one ratio here. So we're going to use eight pieces of lettuce. So we're going to have 12 pieces of lettuce left over, 20 minus eight. And this would go up by eight. We need to make eight hamburgers. So eight hamburgers be produced. You'd have no buns left over after eight pieces of meat, 12 pieces of lettuce sitting around that were not, they were excess. It was excess. So now let's apply that to chemical reactions. It's not a whole lot different, really. So I'm giving some pictures in these. I'm not always doing that, okay? But just for this right now, I'm giving some pictures. Uh, this is in that packet of notes, the stoichiometry notes. Um, so if we look at the picture here, These are pictures of H2 molecules. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So before the reaction, there are six moles of H2 molecules and one, two, three moles of O2 molecules and zero waters. This would be your arrow. So those that this can never be the limiting reactant. That's being what's being being produced. Again, I don't know why my subscripts are up above. They should be down below. But my, for some reason, let's do that. Hang on one second. Just a second. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so our reaction, we need two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. They have to be in that ratio. Well, in this case, we have six and three. That is a two to one ratio. So both of these are limiting reactions. They're both going to run out at the same time. They're in the correct ratio. So we're going to use all six of these. There's going to be none left over. Going to use all three of those, there's going to be none left over. Well, this is a two to two ratio. So if six of these were used, if the change is this one down by six, we made six waters and there's six waters produced. So at the end of this reaction, there's no excess of any of the reactants. All we made is six waters. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to draw the moles in there of those just for time's sake. Um, next one here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight moles of H2. And one, two, three, four moles of water, or excuse me, of hydrogen. I'm going to draw an extra one in there. Draw an extra one. Let's say that there's, let's say there's five moles. Eight moles and five moles. So I put an extra one in there. So we have one, two, three, four, five moles O2 and no waters. Well, our ratio is two to one. So if this is eight, we don't need five of these. We only need four of them. Okay, so in this case, this is going to be our limiting reactant. It's going to run out. There's some excess of that. We only need four moles. We have five. So this will go down by eight. There's going to be zero moles left over. If this goes down by eight, Oxygen is half of that. This is going to go down by four moles. So for every eight moles of, of hydrogen that we use, we use four moles of oxygen. There's a mole of O2 
left over sitting around after the action. These are in a one to two ratio. So if this went down by four, this had to go up by double that, up by eight, and we made eight moles of water. Or we can look at it this way. This is a two to two ratio. So if this went down by eight, that went up by eight. Again, these numbers are in moles. If I give them to you in grams, we gotta get them into moles first. All right. Let's go a couple more here. So this one we have one, two, three, four, five, six moles of hydrogen, and one, two, three, four moles of oxygen, zero waters. Remember, that's the B, that's before. What's the change during the reaction? Remember, these are going down, these are decreasing, and we're making those, that's always increasing. So these are always going down, those are increasing. And our change is always based on the coefficients in the equation, so. Um, well, it's a two to one ratio. So if this is six, this needs to be three and we have four. So this is my limiting reactant. This is my limiting, this is my excess. Limiting excess. So this will go down by six. Got zero moles left over. If this goes down by six, this goes down by half that. So this goes down by three. We have a mole of O2 left over that did not react. It ran out of hydrogen molecules to react with. And this would go up by, it's a two to two ratio with this. So if this went down by six, this went up by six. Or if this went down by three, this went up by double that because it's a one to two ratio. We have six moles of water that were produced. So we used all the hydrogen, that's the limiting, it ran out. Used three out of the four moles of oxygen, we have one mole left over, made six moles of water. Let's do one more here. This one we got, two moles of hydrogen and three moles of oxygen. I'm gonna change this. We're gonna change these numbers. Let's go make this a little different problem. Let's add in, let's go that many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go, we'll go seven. Okay, we'll go seven. So there's, let's say there's seven moles of hydrogen and three moles of oxygen. And there's our arrow, none of that. Well, if this is three, this needs to be six. This is three, this needs to be six, because it's supposed to be double it. So this is now our limiting reactant. This is now our excess. There's excess of that. So this will go down by three. There's gonna be zero moles left over. If this goes down by three, this is double it. This will go down by six. So there's a mole of H2 floating around, not reacted. This is a one to two ratio. So this went up by six moles and you have six moles of water that would have been produced. So there would be six little moles. I don't know if I just drew it. There'd be six moles of water floating around in there. Yeah, I won't draw all those. You guys can draw that yourself if you need to draw it. All right, those are BCA tables before change equilibrium. Remember, those are in moles, the other thing, Reactants are decreasing as the reaction goes. They're turning into this that's increasing.